Hello, St. Thomas. I am in a very quiet choir room in Haas Hall. I spent some time this week taking all the music out of the choir's boxes and, and sorting it to be filed away into the library. And that's music that won't get sung uh, this year. Many of you have seen articles about uh, the dangers of communal singing related to COVID-19 and uh, how singing might be a super spreader uh, because the mechanics of singing, the way that the voice uh, puts particles into the air, aerosols, uh, that may be a risky uh, thing for now. Um, the fact that we just don't know enough has led some dioceses, even the, the whole country of Germany, to ban communal singing in worship. I'm going to be part of a panel discussion next Monday with our bishop, uh, Bishop Gutierrez, with, and other musicians from the diocese uh, about this very thing. We want to be cautious but not fearful, and so that means that uh, when we are able to gather again, we may not be able to sing together. And for me and for many of you, that hits very hard. Uh, what are we, how do we worship without song? It makes me think of Psalm 137. By the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept. When we remembered thee, O Zion, we hanged our harps on the willows, for they that led us away captive required of us a song. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And we are in a strange land. I also think of Jesus' words in Luke where um, the people are shouting and the disciples uh, want Jesus to scold them because they're afraid of the spectacle. And he says, if these ones keep quiet, even the very stones will cry out. When we are able to gather and worship, it may sound a little different. We may not be able to sing together for a while, but we will have music. I promise you that I will use all of my creative powers and everything at my disposal to allow us to have music, to enable our song of praise to God safely. And that may look and sound different than anything we've done before. Uh, we want to be open. It may look like singing in our hearts while we listen. It may even look like learning some simple sign language and singing with our hands. Who knows? This uh, not having singing and it reminds me of uh, what we are hearing a lot about, our longing for receiving Eucharist. Um, and the calls we've heard for virtual communion, where we put our own bread and wine in front of the computer screen and the priest can remotely consecrate uh, it. Uh, apart from some strange practical considerations, you know, does that mean that all the bread in our house instantly becomes the body of Christ? Uh, it, it just doesn't jive with Anglican theology. We believe that uh, the Eucharist is embodied, it is material, and it is made up by the gathered assembly um, coming together as the body of Christ to receive the body of Christ. So, no, we can't have the Eucharist right now, and that leaves a longing, and that is where I think we have to lean in and face that growing edge. Communion is not a commodity. None of us have a right to the body and blood of Christ. It is given to us by grace, and grace resists, grace resists consumerism. Christians for the past 2,000 years have been prevented from receiving the sacrament through persecutions much worse than what we are facing now, and God gave them grace to persevere, and God will give us the same. I believe that now is a chance for us to grow even more into the full stature of Christ as one St. Thomas Church dispersed and soon regathered, we can learn what following Jesus, what taking up the cross really means. And until we can receive communion together, until we can sing together, the stones, the stones that make up the church building behind me will cry out. They will pick up the vibrations, the frequencies of our heart, and they will cry out, and God will hear, and God will bless us.